We love dining with characters, but what about exclusively dining with princess characters? Today we are going to review our experience eating breakfast at Napa Rose at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa in California. Disney Princess Breakfast Adventures is a character dining experience located within Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. If you park at the hotel, they do offer five hours of free valet parking with reservations. The Napa Rose restaurant is located through the main lobby, past the main pool entrance in Storyteller's Cafe. If you happen to be going to Disney California Adventure Park the same day, there's an entrance that is literally right next to the restaurant. So it might be worth planning your park days around this close by entrance. But you do not need to have a park ticket to visit this restaurant experience. It is not inside the park. So you could easily go for breakfast and not enter any Disney park. Despite the very high price tag, this experience is incredibly popular and reservations are very highly recommended. Reservations open up 60 days in advance and we recommend marking your calendars for this date and being ready to make your reservation 60 days out to ensure your spot. Also keep in mind that this experience is currently only open Thursday through Monday from 8 a.m. to 11. Make sure to check these dates and times though as they can change. The Disney Princess Breakfast Adventure debuted at the Navarro's in 2019. At that time, the princesses would come to the tables at the restaurant to visit guests. When the experience reopened in 2021, the experience was slightly modified for social distancing. Now the princesses are outdoors on the restaurant's patios and guests can go visit the princesses there. It is a buffet style restaurant and there are also many items that are served to your table. It's worth noting that this character dining experience is elevated as unlike Storyteller's Cafe, Goofy's Kitchen, or Minnie and Friends at the Plaza Inn. Not only are the characters princesses, which you won't find at any of the other character dining venues of the Disneyland Resort, the service, the linens, wait staff, and food are all elevated to a higher quality, and we'll give some examples coming up about exactly what to expect. Of course, the price is also elevated from the other character dining venues as well. Also, if you aren't already familiar with Napa Rose, it originally opened in 2002 and is a fine dining restaurant that is open for guests for dinner without purchases from 5.30 to 9 p.m. daily. The dinner at Napa Rose is a special experience, though not oriented towards young kiddos. You can enjoy award-winning cuisine here by Chef Andrew Sutton. There's even a special tasting menu. It's very easy to find the Disney Princess Breakfast Adventure by the Napa Rose restaurant sign, but also they put out helpful signage for the morning hours to alert guests that this is in fact the Princess Adventure location. The check-in host stand is just inside the main door. We were thrilled to be greeted by a musician serenading the check-in line guests with various Disney songs in their instrumental versions. We found this melded well with the upscale ambiance of the experience. It was Disney songs, but the style was more subdued in their instrumental form without any vocals. The musician did switch songs when we arrived to play a really cool version of Happy Birthday as our daughter was wearing her happy birthday pin, which is a super nice touch. The host will escort you to a lounge area where you wait to be seated at your actual table. Each party had their own table in the lounge area and the table had a Rapunzel themed tic-tac-toe styled game to play while you waited. Our kiddo loved the tic-tac-toe game. It was super simple, but so effective and we played the whole time we were there. And there was a designated princess outside of this lounge area on the patio. So each table that was waiting would be called to meet this first princess before they were shown to their actual table to eat. We loved how organized this was and you didn't need to worry about lining up to meet the princess. There was an actual cast member specifically stationed to take guest parties out to meet the princess in the order they had arrived. And they waited until you had met the princess before calling you to go to your dining table. We really appreciated how easy this made it for us to relax and it elevated the experience. It can be stressful to wait an hour to meet the princesses in the park at the Royal Hall. It was very personal too. The princesses spent more time talking to each guest before posing for the picture. Sometimes in the park, at the character meets, 
the characters don't even have time to spend with every single guest, which we get, and they go right to the photo op. We love the theme of the restaurant, but we will say it's not princess theme. The theme of the restaurant flows really well with the craftsman era theme of the rest of the resort, and it's very elegant, but not princess theme. We didn't mind this though because it's so lovely inside, just something to be aware of. Once we were done meeting the first princess, we went back to our lounge table, but were very quickly escorted to our main dining table. The staff was very friendly and made the experience even better. The table setting really brought out the princess theme, beautiful fresh flowers with a pink rose that matched the rose folded napkin color in your tea or coffee cup. The menu, which was for drink options, continued the pale pink rose theme, and there was a little card at the table with our last name printed on it. We almost detected a bell from Beauty and the Beast type table theme because of the roses, but just our guess. Coffee, teas, juices, and sparkling waters were included with the meal price, and adults do get one complimentary sparkling wine glass with or without orange juice as well. There was also a drink menu for additional costs. There was a wine list, a fun list of mixed alcoholic drinks. There were also some non-alcoholic mixed drink options for the kiddos. The live music was only in the lounge area where we first were, but the music in the dining room was a similar style. Instrumental versions of Disney songs, with a lot of them coming from Disney princess movies. This is technically a buffet dining experience, but there's also several items that are brought out to our table automatically by your server, meaning that you didn't order it, they just bring it out to all tables. The first item was a pastry basket, which included a delightful cranberry scone. We will mention that our party includes a gluten allergy, and this experience was so accommodating for that. For every regular item that was brought, a gluten-free version of some sort was also presented. We will show you regular items here, and make sure to say if we are showing you a gluten-free item, like this one, the gluten-free chocolate muffin. The next course that was brought to the table was a tall wood tower of small bites. It reminded us of things that would accompany a tea party. There was a banana brulee, a petite ham sandwich, and the bottom of the tower had coconut shea pudding shots, lobster rolls, and beignets. Some of these items were a bit too different for our picky eater, but the adults enjoyed them all. We aren't fans of bananas, but even the brulee banana and crepe was worth trying in our opinion. Our kiddo was pretty interested in the live purple orchid flowers that decorated the tower, and she wanted to keep those. Here's a brief look at the pretty gluten-free alternative plate that was brought out with this course. We thought these alternatives were also pretty delicious. We do want to mention that while the drinks and courses were being served, we were told by our server which princesses were out on the dining area's patio, and they also let us know when would be a good time to go see them based on what was coming to our table next. The princesses on both the lounge and dining patio cycle through, so it's helpful to know who's out so you don't miss one. We saw Mulan and Rapunzel on our first trip to the dining room outdoor patio. There was a line here versus at the lounge patio you were called up individually, but the line was really short and we only ever saw two or three families ahead of us. This made it super easy to go when we wanted though, so the wait was fine and it was still very short. After our princess visit, our server invited us to enjoy the buffet. The buffet had a smaller number of options than something like Goofy's Kitchen, but the items they did have seemed elevated and higher quality as well. We saw beautiful berries and fruit skewer options, seasonal whole fruit, scrambled eggs. We saw Mickey waffles of course, but these came as chicken and waffles, which made it more unique. It was also plated in a cute way. There was turkey and maple sausage, as well as applewood smoked bacon. We also saw a roasted strip loin option and smoked salmon. There was a gray air mac and cheese served in an adorable measuring cup and an asparagus and roasted potato option. We thought these little artisan butter rolls were too cute and were an example of the subtle things that elevated the breakfast. We enjoyed the buffet items. Unfortunately, by the time we went to the buffet, we already had been served several items, so we didn't feel hungry enough to try everything. 
but it would be nice to try different items on another visit because everything looked good. By the time we finished eating the buffet items, the princesses had cycled out and we saw Belle on the patio. We saw Ariel just inside the patio and there was a Disney photographer there to capture your meet and greet for this one princess in particular. Next, they served a lovely dessert display at our table. The presentation was fun, and the server sprinkled edible magic on top, which was a huge hit with our kiddo. It definitely looked like gold glitter. We were too full to enjoy it all, but we tried a few small bites, and it was an absolutely charming display. The princess theme really came out in the desserts. Our little one loved the Belle and Aurora chocolate cake pops. The firecracker strawberry sorbet for Mulan came with prop rocks on it, which was super fun. We thought the mango macaron with the aerial teal color and white pearl was the cutest theme item. There were several items that were gluten free as well, including a chocolate cake pop. Our waiter did let us know that there was a new princess out in the lounge as we were winding down. So we got to see Tiana at our last meet and greet. We really thought the experience was over, but the server came over with a special box for our kiddo with a large Aurora doll in it for her to take home. They also gave us a small canvas tote and a princess signature card to take home. Somehow we had not read about this take home surprise in advance, so we were really pleasantly surprised with this extra touch at the end. Our overall impression of the Disney princess breakfast at Namoro's was impressed. We love the service, the character meetings, the food, and the extra touches that elevated this experience. Really, the con we had was the very high price tag. It might not be something we do on every visit, but we would try it again on a special occasion like a birthday or other special celebration. We would also say that if you don't have young kiddos who are into meeting princesses, or even older kiddos or yourself, it might make the value here not worth it. You also need to be very hungry to get good value at this experience as there's a lot of food and it's hard to try it all. The last thing that could be a con, but it depends on your kiddo, some of the items might be too unique or fancy for young kids to enjoy, but it really depends on your individual kiddo's tastes and preferences, so it may be a pro to try new things too. Overall, we highly recommend this truly unique experience and we'll be back again. Let us know about your experience at the Princess Adventure Breakfast in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Here at Main Street USA Studios, we love providing unique content on all aspects of the Disney parks. Let us know if we missed anything in the comments below. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe.